Winning Live. Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Good morning, good morning. It is the Sunday after week zero. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. This is Winning Cures Everything, of course. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. Normally, these will be a little bit longer, I would imagine, but as of last (laughs) night, only two games to discuss. Uh, If you followed our advice against the spread and you went down to Tunica last night, you were a winner. We both had Miami against the spread. We also both had um, Hawaii against the spread. And Chris told you the over in the Hawaii game and uh, Miami and the under in that game. So, yeah, so far so good on the season. We're doing pretty well. Start the season. (laughs) Pretty good feeling. It's a pretty good. Pretty good. You, uh, you hit last now, night. Let's all go home. <laughs> <laughs> Start done. off with a Fish win. The yeah, there's there's no reason to keep it going, right? <laughs> all right. As always, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six absolutely wonderful sports books, incredible sports books, amazing sports books. Down there, you can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. Uh, you can find the link to that down in the description if you're watching the video or listening to the podcast. Uh, again, you can find us, winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the games, uh, on our opinions, on whatever you want to talk about. We like to hear it, so leave some comments. If you're listening on Apple Podcast, hit subscribe, leave a five-star review. Do all the wonderful things. We appreciate your support in that Chris, let's uh, let's fire into it. We're going to start off with Florida Miami. Oh, the ugly one. Yeah, yeah sure. That let's was the that early one, one, may as well, right? Uh, Florida twenty four, Miami twenty. Miami covered the seven and a half and the under forty seven hit. Uh, Miami fourteen penalties for one hundred and eighteen yards. Florida nine penalties for one hundred yards. Uh, Florida had four turnovers. I two had fumbles. fourteen for one twenty five, but my number could be wrong. Uh. They, Mine came from ESPN, so that's mine, entirely mine possible. Mine, mine came from mine came from Yahoo. So there you go. <laughs> Listen, it's bad. It's bad. They both yeah. gave up over a hundred yards of penalties. Yeah, bad football. It's it was uh, about as bad as you could get. We'll just say that it was about as bad as you can get. Uh, Felipe Franks, seventeen out of twenty-seven, two hundred fifty-four yards, two touchdowns, two picks. When you look at it, just if you're just looking at a box score. Yeah. You're looking at it going, okay, that's not awful numbers, right? Like 17 that's exactly, out of 27. Well, I will tell you this box store for Felipe Franks is exactly what I expected. What do you have last year? Equal number of touchdowns and interceptions also? Yeah, against like, top 15 defenses or top yeah, 20 defenses, they, yeah. This is – and this is a top 20. This is going to be like a top 10 defense probably. Like This is exactly what I expected. If yeah. he threw a touchdown, he's going to equal it with an interception. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was just. Tell me this: with 4:20 left in the game, and Florida gets the ball back with the lead, the first thing they do is they go out and allow Franks to throw a pass. Why on earth would you not run the ball? Like, obviously, they weren't having a ton of success I, on the ground. That, but I think that's why. So Dan, Dan's kind of always a risk taker. He's not a very conservative coach by any stretch. He's never been claimed as that. They couldn't run the ball. No, so but I, run, but I trust run the ball. I trust then, running the ball to run out at least some of the clock or make them burn timeouts I don't, or something. I, I don't know that at four minutes the way the game has gone. Um, I mean, you got to trust your defense. You're right. If you yeah, run out the clock, you, you punt. Do you and, have to trust Felipe Franks though? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. You got that's what yeah, you're probably I mean, you're probably right, but when you look at their rushing stats, they were bad. I, I guess I kind of oh, yeah. get why in the middle of the game, in the like the thralls and the heat of everything going on, I understand why you're like running the ball would be stupid here because we can't do it. I mean, we might as well just take a knee, you know, it's it's the same thing. Well, I mean, but if you look at the the pass that he threw. It, I mean, well, it was just, one of those, I, and I'm certain Dan didn't like the pass that yeah. he threw. Well, no, it was it was a short out, right? And it, like, 
that's about the same as as running like a, a jet sweep or or yeah. just whatever running to the outside just, just like more tackle. opportunity for catastrophe could happen yeah. when the ball's in the air as well, opposed I mean, to in someone's hands that's bear bryant right bear that's bryant right. said there's there's only three things that can happen when you pass the ball and two of them are bad yeah, I think that philosophy is gone, though. It like, is. It is not to besmirch the good philosophies of Bear Bryant, <laughs> but but that game is over. By the way, mm. my boy Mike Leach put that to bed. Yeah. long ago. Yeah, he certainly did. <laughs> uh, all right, so these teams basically, it, for the entirety of the game, I felt like I was watching a junior high school football game. Really <laughs> like they bad. were they were trying to out dumb each other. Uh, these offensive lines are pretty bad. Like they've Miami got room to grow. As a starting two star guy, as their left tackle, I I think in the twenty four seven composite, uh, that can't it, be Zion. Right. Um, what's his last name? You're not you're not a major power five team like Miami, and you you have two stars out there on your starting offensive line. I can't I can't now. I always take beef and umbrage with the star rankings of recruits anyway, because I can't tell you how living in Mississippi around Mississippi state and Ole Miss, how many two and three star guys we've seen outplay big four star dudes kind of on the regular. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I always take those with a grain of salt, but I mean, he looked like a two star last night. He showed sure it. Uh, they gave him both 10 of those sacks, titles. 10 sacks, double digit sacks. Yeah. I mean that's just it, I can't I can't some even... of it some of it's a quarterback that didn't get the ball out of his hands and he's going to learn just throw it away there's nothing wrong with eating the down um and, and then some of it's just man there's nothing you can do the offensive line was just I mean they weren't even standing water I mean it's it's harder to swim than it is to to run past what they ran past let, let me let me tell you what Zion Nelson's stats are okay. uh, or not stats but what his uh what yeah. his numbers are uh, six foot five, two hundred and forty pounds. When he when he came into Miami, uh, he was a three star. Is from that the what he is now? Composite. Uh, no, what he, I'm sure he's probably up to. I mean, but how much can you gain in like an off season, right? Um, I mean, it was, I, you talk to a guy that's put on like twenty five, thirty pounds in a month if he had to. Okay? I don't know, man. I mean, that's it. Yeah, but can he, is like, not big at he's, all. He's not going to be able to put on 65, 70 pounds in time no, for a football does, season. If he does put that much weight on, it will be pure fat. It yeah. won't be muscle. So um, it, he looked small last night, and I, yeah, I noticed no, he it. He looked really small, but I didn't realize he was – I mean, he's under 250. Yeah, when he, when he actually enrolled, he was 240 pounds. Wow, that's – all right. I thought he looked small, but also no. Florida's got some men on defense. Oh yeah. And I'm just I'm just assuming he's small in comparison. No, he's going to be small compared to everybody. Uh, yeah. It's he's a, a three star at two four seven Sports Composite. Okay. Um, All right. But he was ranked the number one hundred and fifteen offensive tackle in this class. Well, he's got room to grow. And that will probably be the hardest defense he plays all year, unless they play Clemson in um, an ACC title game. Well, I'm just I'm trying to figure out like, there's not another defense in the ACC that they're going to play, and I don't know that Clemson's defense will be better than that defense last night. No, I mean, Brett, maybe lost, not. They lost a ton. Now Brett Venables is a genius, and and they they reload and, and retool, but they I mean they lost a lot of NFL talent. They might go backwards a little. That could be the best defense he played all year. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Uh, well, his now, other, like that, they're not playing in the ACC championship game. Let's his other offers, out. by the way, uh, App State, Campbell, Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern. Uh, he, he took the right one, then. Oh, yeah, I, he took the right go one. Go get your ass whipped in Miami. I, I, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so Miami quarterback Jaron Williams was 19 out of 30 uh, for 214 yards, one touchdown, no picks. He did get sacked 10 times like we were talking about. Those two freshman tackles absolutely need – uh, need to mature quite a bit, uh, but like we said, we don't need to worry about it for most of the season, really. I mean, they should be okay. Yeah. Uh, Miami running back, DJ Dallas. That dude is a, a beast. 12 a carries, game. yeah, 12 carries, 95 yards, one touchdown. Uh, 7.9 yards per carry is nothing to sneeze at. And it's not like he had one. See, I always question the – Yards per carry because in college football you got that one run for forty or fifty yards. Yeah, and then the rest are nothing. No, right? this this dude was eight yards a touch, man. Yeah, 
He was legit. I mean, he was really good against a stout Florida defense. They couldn't stop him. Now, you were you were somewhere watching this game with the sound off. But I was they somewhere were, watching this game with the sound off. So they uh, they had a section in this game where they were discussing with Manny Diaz, or they were like showing footage of him saying that if they can't, like you got to learn to make them miss. And they go through these drills and practice on how to avoid tackles, how to make people miss tackles, and it was pretty fascinating because uh, they were showing, you know, Dallas and all these other guys actually, you know, getting a lower center of gravity, being shifty right at the point of impact, and how they can actually roll off of tackle. And you saw it all night long. Like neither one of these teams could tackle, but I wonder if some of that had to do with one, it was early, two. Uh, you know, this is like maybe their players are learning how to do this now, like right. how to get away from tackles, right? That's right. Well, they have to. They have to. The game has to evolve. Yeah. And 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 running the football has kind of in the pro game definitely not gone out of it, and not in college gone out of it completely either. But it's it's decreased a lot. To get it back, running backs have to do something different than they've always done. Yeah. Hey, your body just can't take the hits. And if you're going to take them, yeah, you you roll you roll hits. I mean, it's like boxers. Boxers used to stand square to one another and punch each other's lights out. And then today, nobody lands a punch in a 12-round thing because you just get so good at it grazed my face, but I've learned to to kind of roll my shoulders and roll my bodies. When yeah, I take not a take punch. the full impact. Yeah, when I take the punch, I take part of it, not all of it. And, and I just think the running backs – we're finally getting some sports science in this. Kudos to Manny Diaz. And the guy that would know better how to do this is a dude that has taught guys to tackle these guys his whole life. Yeah. I've never understood why more defensive-minded coaches that get head coaching jobs can't help the offenses more than they do because they've spent their entire life trying to stop them. So surely they can help their offense not get stopped better. I, it just it blows my mind that one coach that I can think of off the top of my head, but he's a genius at everything, is Bill Belichick. He's the only defensive minded coach that was like, I can beat you with defense, I can beat you with offense, I can beat you with anything yeah. because I understand all the aspects of the game. It it, it kind of boggles my mind. That that says a lot for Manny. No, you're right about that. You are absolutely right about that. Uh quick note, Kadarius Tony from Florida. One reception, 66 yards, had it early in the first quarter. That was the first touchdown scored. Had three carries for three yards. They have got to get this guy more touches. They got to get him out in space. I don't know why. Like They were talking about this last year. Why do you not get this guy more touches? He is as explosive as it gets. I, I, I could not understand. I don't, have an, I don't have an answer for the play calling. I don't have an answer for um, why they couldn't run the ball. I know that Miami is stout, but but you should have big dudes on the offensive line. And Dan Mullins knows how to scheme an offensive play call. Like he he knows how to to design off. Yeah, he's he's run to a be spread. pretty balanced. Yeah, he's, he's done his entire career. It now even they replaced four offensive linemen, right? But they they still had their starting center back. But you still got big dudes up there. Like uh, yeah, you it's can, not like you replaced them with 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 two star friends. Yeah, exactly that are one hundred forty. Uh, <laughs> that two forty. Like, did did uh did you see Pat Forty's article this morning? Yeah, about, this 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 game should have destroyed week zero. Yeah, and and yeah. here's my only and I I normally agree with everything that Forty says. I'm I'm such a fan of football, and I'm glad we yeah. got it. But it's just like, man, but this is what we got. These teams, uh, they started practice a week early. Like they had the same practice time that teams that play next week will have. So this this starting, is just what week one looks like. Yeah, starting this game next week was going to be just as bad as it was yeah, last it, night. It wouldn't have made it better. No. It just wasn't going to make it better. You've got a first-year head coach, first-time head coach ever, yeah. and and you, you've you got – I mean, I, I know Felipe Franks finished with a really good season last year in the SEC. I, I'm, I'm not buying that guy until until I'm proven wrong, and I'll just, I'll just keep riding the wave of he's good – but but just as much as he'll make the plays that'll help you win a game, oh, he'll make them to lose them. He too. will equally equally make as many plays to cost you games, 
and and that that leads to a six and six record. Now, because you have insane talent in the SEC East, isn't super crazy stout. You're gonna finish more eight and four, nine and three than than six and six. But I don't know. I don't know. So let me ask you this. Okay. And, and, and maybe maybe we're not at a point where you want to do this, but a, just a complete overall of these games. I left that game thinking I'm more. I, and it's not just the competition that they play. I believe more in what Miami is doing, even though they lost this game, that if Florida plays in the way they played last night and they don't get better, okay, now they're going to improve. Okay. But if they don't, if this is the Florida team that we got for the rest of the season, they're going to lose five football games. Oh, yeah. Like they're, like top 10, they're not going to be close to the top 10. They won't be in the top 25. They might not be in the top 50. Now, I assume they are going to get better because that is the Dan Mullins mark is they just gradually improve every game, every week. Yeah, they do. But, but they got to way more than gradually improve by the time they get into SEC play. I mean, even schools like South Carolina and Tennessee, are, you know. Or week three sports. against Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky. Like, I'm not talking, oh, you can't beat Georgia if you play like that. Man, you, you're not going to beat many SEC teams if you play like that. There's – also, there's not a lot of SEC teams that will have the type of defense that that Miami had, right? No, it, but all those SEC teams are going to have way better offenses than Miami had. No, this is true. This is true. But so it, they, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a yin and a yang. You ain't getting ten sacks on all these other schools. I, no, I agree. I I think Florida will be fine. They're not great. Remember, I had them at nine and three. I said it wouldn't shock me if they go eight and four, eight or even four. seven and five. Yeah. No, we're we're the same. We're very um, much the same there. But I, this is. All right, so my dad and I were texting back and forth during the game, and one of my quotes to him was, trusting Felipe Franks at this point. Like, I think that that guy is just a disaster waiting to happen, and he always has been. His four games at the end of last season were against teams that had either quit or just didn't have good defenses or they had guys sitting out, etc. I totally agree. When he went against good teams, he – threw up all over himself every time. I feel like it is a waste of a season to to play Felipe Franks instead of right. Emory Jones. I, now you know what? You're 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 right on that. I'm gonna tell you the reason so South Carolina, here's the reason why he why he's playing Felipe Franks. Because Felipe Franks gives you a better chance. chance to win. Yeah, a better chance to win right now. As right opposed now. to building a foundation. And that is Dan Mullen is a coach that as soon as he got to Florida he felt the pressure to win, I'm gonna win now. Right, That's right now. That's right. He does. And he absolutely feels that. And you, sometimes you just have to let it blow up for one season and get it headed in the right I direction. I think they have enough talent at Florida where it wouldn't blow up. It wouldn't be a complete catastrophe. No, you they'd still go. As, you, know, you won't be as good or maybe as explosive, but you'll be a lot more conservative and safe. And, and so all the games he cost you, you're still going to win. Florida is – far more talented than teams like South Carolina. South Carolina is like the prototypical team I'm thinking about here. They're better than them at every aspect of the ball. But you know what? They're not better than them at quarterback. And and they're not, oh, God, I just got attacked. <laughs> Maui, <laughs> Maui, 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 get out of here. I mean, uh, the dog gets in just, all the time. Oh, I literally just got tackled. <laughs> oh, that, that thing is massive. No, I won't leave. Um, but but um, Florida's better than them at every aspect of the game. But you know what? They've got a good defense too. Now, are they anywhere close to Miami? No, but but they'll make Felipe Frank their bitch. Yeah. Okay. The difference is, is they don't have some freshman quarterback with no experience on the other side of the ball. They they got a dude that's been in the SEC and and is not afraid of any defenses. Are they great offensively with the skill positions and the offensive line? Everywhere? No, but they got a quarterback that's not afraid. Yeah. No, you're right about that. And I just see SEC play could get tough for them. Sorry, oh, that yeah. was a long rant. No, Got no, tacky. you're you're right. I love it. We we just spent 20 minutes on uh, Florida Miami, and so of course the the overreaction train is is high. <laughs> well, we've spent 20 minutes on it. We've been we've been dying for football oh, yeah. for so long. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.